Okay, let's get started. So the next talk is by Bart Janssen on the Julia programming language and the integration they have done with the Trilinos uh, application. Take it away, Bart. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so before starting the actual talk, let me give you a bit uh, of information about my background. So I work at the Royal Military Academy here in Brussels, which is uh, the university, let's say, of the defense department in uh, Belgium. And so why did I get involved with uh, Julia language? Well, uh, my background is mainly in uh, computational fluid dynamics, for which I have written lots of C++ code which I find myself a lot of fun to do. But the problem with C++ code is that even though it is fast, it is very difficult to convince others to continue working on it. And uh, especially students doing a master thesis, students who typically have a scientific ba background and no real programming background, uh, they have difficulties working on, uh, on a code in a language like C++. And so then I came across Julia, which promises to be fast and uh, easy to use. So that's why I got started on this. Uh, and most of, the, most of my time using Julia is spent on making it interoperate with large C++ libraries, things for uh, solving large linear systems like Trilinos, uh, which of course are not easily rewritten in five seconds in a new programming language, so you have to interface with existing libraries. So that will be the main topic of this talk. So just a brief uh, outline. First I will introduce the Julia language uh, itself. Uh, so just to know how many of you have uh, tried the Julia language at some point. Okay. <laughs> Uh, after introducing Julia, we will look at the integration of uh, Trilinos and uh, MPI, so the typical, some typical high-performance uh, tools. The notebook that I'm presenting here is uh, also available for download on the, the website. There's a link on the FOSDEM website. So the, the first question you might ask is why another programming language? And so the specific goal of the Julia language is to eliminate what they call the two-language problem, which is typical something that happens in scientific computing. The, the scientist will quickly write something in MATLAB, typically. Then that will prove that the code works, but unfortunately it will be far too slow for production use. And so then someone with uh, more knowledge of computer science will have to rewrite it all in uh, C++ or even Fortran, because that's, they know they can get a fast result. The idea of Julia is that you can basically use the same language for both kinds of applications. It's the same language, but not necessarily the same code, because if you naively write Julia code, it can be uh, slower than desired as well. But with a bit of optimization um, and a bit of tweaking, you can get uh, this prototype code and make it fast. So what? What are the, the key features of the language? So it's a high-level programming language, high-level in the sense that the syntax is uh, quite easy to understand, a bit like Python, uh, geared at scientific computing, but with potential for uh, generic programming, let's say, for general programming. It's a dynamic language, so you have basically a script-like file that you run using the, the Julia command. Unlike... Uh, most other dynamic languages, it has strong typing, and you can define your own types, and you can even define generic types like template types in C++. And it is just in time compiled using uh, LLVM. Uh, the central concept of the language is multiple dispatch, which we will explain uh, in a few moments. So let's start with uh, a simple function where we just want to add uh, two things a and B together. So the syntax here is pretty simple, but because it's such a short function, you can also write it in one line like this. Also, the return here is optional. Uh, if you just print, uh, if you omit the return, it will just return the last value that you have in the function. So let's test this, and uh, we see that it uh, works correctly. 
So I said it was a strongly typed language. Uh, so where are these types? You can, of everything that you create or uh, every variable you create in Julia, you can request the type using the type of function. And here we see it's a 64-bit integer if we just have the literal one. Uh, if we apply our add function to two integers, we see we get an integer back. And if we do the same for a floating point uh, numbers, we get a floating point value back. So why is that important? Uh, it is important because Julia will compile a new function for every possible combination of types that you supply it. So comparing the integer version with the floating point version, we can directly look at the machine code using the code native macro in Julia. And we see that the, the machine code for both these functions is very similar, uh, except for this instruction here, which here is integer addition, and here we have floating point addition. So it compiles a specialized function for every combination of types that we have. So how does that then compare to C++? In C++, we can achieve the same thing. The syntax is slightly uh, more verbose. So basically, if you remove all the green highlighted keywords, you have back, again, the Julia code, which is just the A plus B. Uh, but this in C++ achieves the same thing as we just saw in uh, Julia. So it's valid for any combination of types A and B. It automatically computes the return type and will, if you invoke this function in C++, compile a new version for every combination of the arguments. So in a way, C++ can do the same thing as in Julia, but the syntax is more verbose. And here, it is purely a static computation of the type only at compile time in C++. In Julia, uh, the, what the multiple dispatch mechanism means is that um, it will choose based on the types of arguments that you supply to the function, it will choose which function to call. And it can do this statically, just like in C++ template functions at compile time, in this case, just in time compiled. Or it can do it dynamically. If the type of the argument is not known at compile time, it will choose the function to call at runtime, a bit like a virtual function in uh, C++. So let's take a brief look at the user-defined types. We can define a type like this, which contains one single field, an integer value. And we can then create uh, a value of my number containing the value 2 here, for example. So how does that work with our add function? As you can imagine, I didn't specify any types, type limitations on the add function, so I can just call the function on it. But of course, the plus operator in Julia is not defined for uh, my, uh, my number type. So to fix this error, we have two options. We can override the plus operator of Julia, or we can specialize the add function directly. I chose the latter here. And so you can annotate the function add, create a new version of it, let's say, that takes A as a my number and B can be anything, and then implement this to return a my number. So we see now, after executing this, that there, are no, no, there is now an add function, but it has two methods. So then you might wonder which are those methods, and for that we have the methods call. And we can see that now we have the two add functions, the one we first defined and the one, uh, the specialization, let's say. And now if I call it first with the my number, it will call the specialized function and return the correct value for this uh, kind of thing. And this way, it's very easy to build a complex system using your own types and overriding the necessary functions uh, that makes for a, a very flexible code in the end. So the next topic is about uh, interoperability. So natively, Julia is uh, made to be, uh, let's say, in terms of memory layout, compatible with C. And it also provides a nice interface for calling C functions directly out of the box. And then there are many packages uh, that uh, help when you need to call C++ or Python or R, MATLAB. Uh, there are, is a whole series of them. So calling C functions happens through the C call primitive. It's not really a function, but it does something at the LLVM level directly. And so we can call 
uh, the FAPS function, so to get the absolute value using the standard mat, mat library, here of the value minus one, and it returns uh, one as expected. Using the benchmark tools package, we can get an idea of the overhead that this induces, so calling the C function here takes about 3.6 nanoseconds. And we can also compare this with the native absolute value function in Julia, and we see that considering that this is such a small function, the overhead is really small. Next is the integration of uh, MPI. So using this C call primitive where we can uh, call C functions, we can of course also call the MPI uh, C functions. And then if we write a Julia program using this wrapped uh, MPI function, we can just run this using MPI run Julia and then the script that we created. So we will compare a bit between C and uh, Julia using a simple uh, MPI reduce. So this is the, the C code, where you have all the variable declarations in the beginning, the MPI initialization, uh, and then to sum, so the idea is that we will in parallel calculate the sum of the elements of an array. So we uh, allocate our array and fill it with the value equal to the rank plus one, and then we want to time the sum, so in MPI, all of this code will be executed on each process, and so every process sums together its part of the array, and then it will call uh, MPI reduce to sum all the sums calculated by each process. And then once the MPI reduce is finished, we stop the timer and uh, show how, how long this took. So then in Julia, the code looks pretty much the same, uh, except that all the stuff about uh, memory allocation and so on is much simpler using the native Julia arrays. So we just create our, our array using this uh, line of code here. Uh, to keep similarity with the C code, I manually wrote the sum here. Of course, you have a sum function that if you call it on an array, it will calculate the sum. Uh, but then you might think I called an optimized sum, and so I was cheating. So here is just a basic for loop, as we wrote in, uh, in the C code, and we call the reduce on that. Note that the uh, MPI package uh, puts around some niceties around this uh, reduce call, so uh, we can replace the MPI sum with a plus, and it just returns the value instead of putting it in a reference argument. And so this gives us the, the same result as in the C code. Uh, actually, this runs in the notebook on the slide on one CPU because I have the MPI package installed, and that's the, the timings that you see here on one CPU. Running on my uh, home computer on four cores, we get in the C code. The timing was a bit unstable, but I got between 0 0.022 seconds and 0 0.065, and then on Julia we see we get equivalent timings. So for this kind of low-level loop, we see that we are at equivalent speed of C, so that is really uh, showing that Julia makes good on, uh, on this promise. So uh, maybe I'll go over this a bit uh, more quickly, but uh, cxxrep.gl basically works in the same way as boost.python, so it allows you to write an interface code in C++ that will automatically generate Julia functions to call from the Julia side. And so that's what I've used to wrap the Trillinos library, uh, the large matrix library. Some comparisons showing uh, the overhead. So if we loop over 50 million elements doing uh, multiplication of two floating point numbers, we get this time in Julia and directly in C++ this timing. So again, a low level loop will run as fast in Julia as it will in C++. However, if we do the multiplication by C calling a function from C++, we see that the difference is not that great. So there is little overhead in calling external functions. So the Trillinos library, uh, who here is familiar with the Trillinos library? Not that many, okay. So it's a, basically it's a library that allows you to um, solve large linear systems on a compute cluster. Um, 
the example that we will use here is the 2D Laplace equation. So you solve this uh, differential equation on a grid of, in this case, 1,000 by 1,000 nodes, and you will get this kind of uh, 2D uh, parabolic surface as a result. So it's just a benchmarking uh, problem. Now, part of the code uh, that is performance critical is the assembly of the linear system, so filling in the matrix with all the elements. This is the C++ code in uh, Trillonus, so the core of this algorithm is a loop over all the elements of the matrix that are on the current process. So that's really a low-level loop, and in that loop you will fill out the elements. The values of these elements is basically where the link with the physics of a problem is. So understanding where these values come from is basically the job of the scientist. So we see that we have very close proximity here between uh, a scientific value and a very technical loop over uh, the elements here. The code in Julia looks basically the same, because of course you keep the same names and so on when uh, wrapping a library. And so running these two things and comparing the performance shows that it is very favorable. So I ran this on multiple computers until I found one where Julia was slightly faster. But uh, you, can, you can get the, the opposite result also. But uh, the main point is that this is a very basic example where there is very little mathematical heavy computation going on. And most of what you measure is overhead. So if it already is this close, you can uh, safely assume that you will get no real performance loss from doing this uh, in Julia. So these are just the different steps of the algorithm that I consider to be performance critical. And basically this result is what motivated me to continue using Julia, because even for performance critical parts of the code, uh, you can rely on the fact that Julia will not impose a performance bottleneck that you will not be able to get around uh, at a later time with the advantage that the code will be understandable by a scientist in the end. So that brings me to the conclusions. So Julia is a, a fast, high-level language, as we've seen. And we can uh, interoperate with existing work, which may be very extensive, such as is the case of the Trillinus library. Uh, and it uh, really delivers on the performance of matching the C++ uh, C++ performance. There is much more that I didn't uh, have time to mention in this uh, brief presentation. Uh, also, good reasons to choose for Julia. Mm -hmm. So the types, you can have generic types, a bit like template types in uh, C++. There is, of course, support for parallel programming. We have seen, seen how we can reuse MPI. But Julia also has its own system for parallel programming, and the two can, in fact, also work together. Um, a very important aspect is the metaprogramming. So you can take any Julia expression and manipulate it in Julia itself. And uh, you can write macros uh, and generated functions that leverage this expression tree to do, for example, loop unrolling automatically. So you can take an expression and uh, if it has a for loop, you can uh, rewrite this expression to just execute the expressions uh, in sequence instead of having a loop. A very interesting package uh, is uh, CUDA native, where you can write uh, NVIDIA CUDA kernels right in the Julia language. And you can make this interoperate with Julia types, with Julia arrays, and you get uh, very intuitive code, but it is running on the GPU, and you don't have all the all the mess with uh, dealing with the NVCC compiler and so on. And of course there is a very large and expanding ecosystem of uh, excellent uh, packages also for uh, machine learning and so on. There are uh, differential equations, there are uh, a lot of cool packages uh, that allow you to already uh, dive in and uh, use it for real world, world problems. So this uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bart. Any questions for Bart? Yes. Uh, so when calling into C or C++ code, in practice, how uh, tedious it is to convert between Julia types and C or C++ types? 
Uh, yes, so in the, in the case of straight C code, you can, uh, like the, the struct I wrote, Uh, here, so this uh, the layout of this struct is the same as in C. So you can reuse C structs, and the typical way of doing it is to write a C struct, a Julia struct that mirrors the C struct. So if you have to do that manually, it's a bit tedious. Uh, what I do in CXX wrap, uh, basically the uh, C++ class is just a pointer in Julia and you uh, wrap all the methods and functions of the class to be a Julia function. And so that way there is no real data conversion and everything happens at the function level. And uh, then there's uh, cxx.jl, which allows you to, in fact, directly intermix C++ code with Julia code, uh, because this works at the LLVM level. And so it will actually compile the C++ code using the same LLVM as uh, Julia runs on, but I, I haven't used it myself that much. Another question? Uh, related to the previous question, how do you uh, enforce boundary uh, checks uh, with C strings or arrays? Um, so, the there are a few special types in the C call interface, such as C string. If you say, um, oops, too far. So here you specify the types of the arguments. So for example, if you put C string here, it will know that it's a null terminated C string. Okay, but um, you, so you, Treat the C strings the same way as C does it. Uh, you just uh, terminate yeah, it with a zero byte. If it's a C string, yeah. Uh, but the native Julia strings are different. Native Julia strings are different, and so if you put C string here, it will, and you put the Julia string there, it will do the conversion. Automatically. Yeah. Automatically. Right. Yeah. Hi, uh, but Julia sucks. When you're doing plots, it takes a long time to do the first plot. Yeah, that's that's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> so, I, I myself, I uh, used to have Python plotting, and I still use Python a lot for plotting. If you have the hab habit of typing uh, Python, my scripts, my data. Uh, in Julia, that's slower, so you have to launch Julia and then call a plotting function every time. That makes it faster. But I think it's a temporary problem, I hope. <laughs> Oh, um, so is there a package manager to uh, install packages from a repository? Yes, the, you just call uh, the command pkg.add and then the name of your package. Any more questions? Does, does the package manager have Trillinos in it? Not yet. <laughs> Any more? In the back? And have to run all over. <laughs> Hi. Um, is there any scope in uh, writing an executable in uh, Julia uh, for OpenForm uh, and using the C++ class libraries from OpenForm? Um. I, I think you could interface OpenForm using cxx.jl or um, cxxwrap.jl. Uh, or the other way around, you can, from Julia, get a C function pointer to a Julia function mm -hmm. and call that from OpenForm. That's a possibility too. Do you think there will be any performance benefit or...? Uh, it can never be really faster than C or C++ because basically it's just LLVM compiling code in the end. So the the basic performance that you the maximum performance that you can get is the same in both languages. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Bart. Thank you.